Okay, now that we've downloaded the Osmond app, we're going to click on its icon and fire it up to do the initial settings. Screen comes up, click on the Get Started button at the bottom. Now it's going to search for a map to download. And that'll depend on what area you're at. So if you happen to be in Idaho, it's going to try to download an Idaho map. I'm going to skip this for now. And it says that you can download these maps later, so I'm going to do that. It says skip. Okay, now the screen pops up, the map screen, but there's nothing on it because we haven't downloaded any maps. So the first thing we want to do is change the plugins. So I'm going to click on the three bars on the bottom left of the screen here. And I'm going to click on plugins. And we'll select the plugins we need. We need online maps because we want to be able to get maps off of the internet and load them in there dynamically. Um, so online raster maps, which are picture maps. Uh, one example might be Microsoft Hybrid, which is one of my favorites. And also there are overlays for the trail maps that come in that way. So I'm going to enable that. Trip recording is to save your tracks as you're riding. That's very useful. Doesn't cost anything. Um, open street map monitoring, we don't need that. Contour lines, that's a nice one to have, but you have, it's an in-app purchase, so you have to pay a little extra for it. Worth it in my mind. Um, audio video notes is nice. You can click on the map someplace and then record a audio or take a video and then you can go back later on the map and click on that icon. It'll play back the video or the audio. Parking position is another um, additional map that plug-in that you have to purchase and I don't use that one. Accessibility, I uh, don't need that and I'm going to do Osmond Development, which is nice for simulating routing. Okay, now I'll click on the back arrow at the top of the screen on plugins. And now I'm going to click lower left settings again and then select download maps. And then I'm going to select North America, United States. And some, since I'm in New Hampshire, I'm going to click on New Hampshire. And there's a standard map or a roads only map. I'm going to do the standard map because that has uh, more of, uh, it has polygons in the background instead of just roads. So I'm going to click on that. And then I'll wait until that downloads. And I'm on a 30 megabyte fiber line here over Wi-Fi, so it goes pretty quickly. And I'll do the world overview map later. That's actually pretty big. And now I'm going to go back to click on the map now I actually see something on here see some roads and some polygons the polygons are the green areas lakes are polygons but again this is a highway map so that's not that important right now um, I'm gonna go back in here and go to settings general settings and I'm gonna set the default profile to a car Local languages should be set up according to my phone. Units of length, I'm going to change that to miles and feet. Voice guidance, I'm going to select TTS Voice English. And now I'm going to go to a very important, the data storage folder. The data storage folder is where Osmond stores its data, like additional maps and things. 
Um, one of the things we want to do is make sure that's accessible to us as users instead of just the app itself. And in order to do that, we click on this and we click on the little pencil and you can see there's a variety of different types, internal application memory. That one there, you won't have any access to it. External storage, you may have access to it. And this may vary from phone to phone, depending on how they set up the protections of the file folders. And I'm going to click shared memory because I know that will allow me access. And then here it asks a question, do you want OSM AND to copy its data files to the new destination? And since we downloaded the New Hampshire map, I want to say yes to that, or I want to say copy. So I'm going to click copy. And then after it does that, I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to go back again. And I should be able to exit out of the program now and then see if I can find the files I'm looking for. So I'm going to just swipe that off the screen. And I'm going to go into ES File Explorer to verify that I have access to the Osmond data storage folder. So I'm going to click on internal storage and then I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to see right here is a folder um, called Osmond. So that means I have access to it now. I'll deselect that and hit the back button once. Now, one of the things I like to do, <clears throat> this has the large icons. I like to use ES File Explorer with a different view in which I have small detailed lists. So that way it's easier to scroll through these things instead of looking at those big ones. So again, if I want to <clears throat> look in the root folder of Osmond, I click on that one. And then now I'll see there's a whole bunch of folders in there. Fonts, rendering, roads, sounds, tiles, tracks voice. And if I look at the very bottom, I see U.S., New Hampshire, North America, OBF. That's the online vector file that's being displayed. Um, so we have everything there. One of them we're going to use is rendering. If I look at that, there's the default render. That's the default way a vector map looks in, this, in the screen when displayed as a map. And we're going to add a couple um, specific ones for snowmobiling. So at this point, we can exit out of ES File Explorer and we will go back to our web browser and download the zip file containing the snowmobile trail map data from the Backwoods GPS Trails website.